In this video, I will show you how to fully disassemble the motor on a Singer Featherweight 221. So the motor is on the back of the machine and we've already removed the wiring from the machine at least up until the actual motor. These wires here are the last two wires to deal with and they are attached within the motor. So what we need to do first before we can kind of fish these wires out of this hole right here is loosen the mount for the motor. That's on the top of the machine. This is the screw that I'm talking about right here. And you will probably have a screw with a washer behind it. That's what we want to remove. And when we do that, the motor is going to kind of fall down, but it doesn't have very far to fall. So we won't worry about that. So you need a decent size screwdriver. It's left to loosen. This one was already loose. I've been dealing with a wobbly motor ever since I started, but just unscrew it and it will just fall out. This is the screw and the washer. We can set those aside. Now you'll see this is nice and loose. So what we want to do is here is where the wires are coming up into the motor itself. The wires are sticking out over here underneath the machine. They are covered in a cloth like covering and it's probably going to be really crumbly and gross. But what you need to do is gently tug on the cloth part that covers the wires and you're going to feed them through a hole that's in the machine, but the hole kind of has a little bit of a curve to it. So you can't just pull them straight out. Sometimes it helps to check out the underside of the machine and get a visual of what's going on before you start pulling it out. So here's the underside. And if you start just pulling on the wires and you don't notice that one of these contacts is kind of hung up, you risk actually breaking it off. So I like to turn the machine sideways and now I'm grasping that cloth covering and I'm kind of pushing from the underside on the wires and pulling on the cloth covering. And I'm guiding them out through the hole. And like I said, this hole kind of has a curve. So it starts down here underneath the machine, but it ends up here. So there's just that little curve. And I will tell you, put on gloves if you want, because this stuff does get on your hands and it's kind of a pain to get off. So I've almost got this fed through. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure that those little contacts at the ends of my wires aren't hanging up anywhere on the machine. And I'm just going to gently pull the last little bit out, checking to make sure that nothing's stuck on anything. And it's almost out. You can see one of the contacts right here now through that hole. And it feels like something's stuck. So I'm going to flip it around as far as I can see. Nothing is stuck, so I'm going to keep gently pulling that last little bit. Oop, you can't see it. There we go. It's out. So I can take my machine now and set it aside. I don't need it. So here's the motor and it mounts on your machine like this. And these wires, you can see how it's kind of it has the shape bent into this covering here. They kind of bend up and then they run up to the plug on the side of your machine. Here's this little pulley that we mount the belt onto and it's 
when the motor spins, this spins, which spins the belt. So if you didn't want to go this far, I want to show you what I would do without taking the motor off of the machine. So we know the motor sits like this. Well, the motor has two brushes and you can access one up on the top right here. There's a little cap. And if you flip your machine over while the motor's still on, there's a hole here that allows you to access the other cap. So you can always check and even replace your brushes without ever taking the motor off of your machine. And if you didn't want to do this particular step, that's what I would be recommending that you do. So what we will do first so you can see how it's done is we will take the brush caps off and we will look at the brushes and try to get a look at the commutator down inside. And depending on how dirty it is, that's going to determine how easy it actually is for us to see. These brush caps, they look like little screws and they are, they're threaded, but they're kind of delicate. So what I like to do is when I'm using my screwdriver, just if it feels really stuck, don't force it because you can crack them. You can also get new replacements for these. They don't look any different than the vintage ones. So if you had one that uh, was, let's say the top was sheared off. I've actually received motors where I couldn't even see the groove for the screwdriver anymore because it was like already broken. And I can see how it would be easy to break one myself. So once I loosen this, I can just finish it with my fingers and you'll see, it's just like a short looking little plastic screw. We'll set that aside. Now, do you see the spring sticking out? This is the end of my carbon brush. The carbon brush itself is actually on a spring, which provides enough pressure to always keep the brush up against the commutator inside. So I just like to gently wiggle and pull. If you do this too hard and too fast, you can separate the brush from the spring. It can be put back on, but you'll have a hard time getting your brush back possibly without taking your motor apart. So gently pull it out. This is the brush and it's the first time I've gotten a look at it, to be honest, for this motor. And I can see it actually has plenty of life left. If it were down to here, I would replace it. But this brush is still going to work for a long time. Let me point out something else interesting. Let me see if I can wipe it off a little bit. Look at this brush. Can you see how there's a curve in it? If I flip it this way, you wouldn't see it. But when the brush is sitting on the commutator, the commutator is a circle. I'll try to do my best like this. And it's resting against that circle shape. So as the commutator spins, the brush eventually gets a circle like shape cut into it. That's important to see because when we put the brushes back, we want to match that curve that's on the brush back against the commutator. If we accidentally spun it the wrong way, we would have to wait for that brush to reseat. You might hear some funny clicking noises, things like that. So we'll pay attention when we put it back. But here's the first brush. It's in great shape. I'm only going to wipe it off with a cloth. I'm not going to put any chemicals on it. No oil, no alcohol, no water. Just wipe it off with the cloth. Our second brush, we remove the same way. And they are both left to loosen. Ooh, <laughs> that spring's doing its job. It, it uh, took the cap for a little ride. And so gently just pull this out. And again, most of the time you'll find that your brushes are the same length. If your motor's running correctly and they were replaced at the same time, they should pretty much be the same length. And we can see that this has a little bit of a curve in the end, one way, not this way, but this way. So we'll put it back that way. So, and if you wanna just double check, you can always put your brushes together 
and you can see these brushes are wearing evenly. So we're going to set it aside. So if you were only checking your brushes and your motor was remaining on your machine, then what I would have you do is look down inside this hole right here. It might not show too well, but there's, you can see there's almost a pink coppery color down inside this hole. That's a commutator. You should be able to see it from both sides. If you had a Q-tip that is small enough to fit inside that hole, you could put it down in and then turn the pulley on your motor, which is going to spin the commutator up against the Q-tip. And it's going to wipe off a little bit of that extra carbon dust that's collected as the brushes start to wear. If you feel like when you look at your commutator, you can see a decent amount of copper, it's not like solid black, you probably don't need to do this step. But for me, if I were only rep replacing the brushes, I would at least try to wipe off some of the black carbon off the commutator before I put the you know new brushes back in or the old ones if they didn't need replaced. and I would know that it's kind of getting a fresh start. So see that commutator in there? But if you're going along for the whole ride, we're gonna take this apart. So I already have my brushes, I've set them aside. I also have two brush caps, the screw and washer that mounts it to the machine. So let's talk about what to do next. First, I want to take this weird cloth sheath off. And when I put this motor back together, I'm actually going to be using some heat shrink tubing instead of trying to mess with putting this back on, mainly because all this is what has crumbled off of this sheath. It's just old and it really needs to go. The heat shrink tubing will do just as well of a job and Personally, I think it will be easier to feed the wires back through that hole when we put the motor back on. But because these wires are sort of hardwired to our motor, we just don't want to start pulling. Pinch the wires coming out of the motor with your finger and then you can slowly pull this sheath off. Now do you see how this wire is all bent funny? It's bent that way because you have such a small space to fit everything in once you wire the plug back that that wire had to be bent that way to make everything fit. So I just gently pull and it's going to make a mess. But I want to remove this and you probably could cut it off but that's taking a chance of cutting a wire that maybe you didn't intend to cut. So I'd rather just be patient and gently pull it off. Oh, there we go. So this is going in the trash for me. If you, I have put them back on, you can do that. There was no judgment, but I'm not keeping it. Okay, so now we have just our wires exposed. Now, take a good look at your wires. If you look at them up close, you will see that one should be just black and one will have some color. It's in the thread of the covering of the wiring, but you'll see it spaced out every so often, red, red, red okay you need to be able to recognize that because when we rewire the plug that's how you're going to tell apart these two wires and know which terminal they're going to go back on so to take the motor apart the first thing that we need to do is take this little pulley off of the end and if you spin it sort of like this then you have room to get your smaller screwdriver down into this little screw, which is what I'm going to do next. So now 
I have my pulley turned where I can hopefully fit my favorite screwdriver in. And I'm just going to try to loosen that screw. And it is left to loosen. And it can be a little bit snug. This is one place that I really don't want to put penetrating oil. If you have to, we're gonna be cleaning all the parts, so that's fine. But you don't want it dripping all inside the motor, so you really have to be careful about where the penetrating oil is going. And this is slowly starting to loosen. I think I can switch screwdrivers now. Now this will unscrew quite a ways, and I wanna show you how it works. It's a set screw. See that? If you look, you can see there's the flat spot right there that that set screw rested on. And your pulley should just slide right off. Now, you wanna keep these together. If you want, you can put the set screw back in the hole on the pulley, or if you have a small container you're keeping everything in and you're not worried about it getting lost, then go ahead and do that. So what's next? Well, we have two screws we need to loosen. They are on the top, one here and one here. They're both left to loosen and they're very long. So let's just take them out. And it looks like somebody's messed with this motor already because do you see that? Look at how much damage is on that screw head. So I wanna make sure that I'm using the best bit I possibly can. And fingers crossed, it's in there tight. The other side turns easily. So we'll go ahead and get this one out first. This one has damage too. <laughs> which makes me wonder what I'm gonna find inside this motor. Hopefully nothing bad, the commutator didn't look too dirty. So look, see how long? But when this screw is going through the motor, not every part it's going through is threaded. There are only certain parts that are. So this is one screw. And what I'm going to do, because that other screw is tight, I'm just gonna kind of give this a little wiggle sometimes if you don't have these set just right you'll have trouble getting a screw in all the way um, and i'm just wondering if it's the same in reverse switch angles and get some of this out of the way it's not helping okay maybe this way ah praise the lord okay it's turning see so we can just take this one out, left to loosen. Here it goes. So I'll see what I can do to this screw head to, cause this is rough to touch. Like you could almost cut your finger on this right here. So I'll set that aside. Now, this motor is not just going to pull apart my hands. I do not want to do that. I want to slowly wiggle it apart and you're going to have three pieces you'll have the band which just fits around the outside and this end and this end and these wires are connected so as i wiggle this apart i'm going to stop and keep pushing the wires in a little bit so i have more slack on the inside but if you twist see it's starting to come apart now i'm going to stop and i'm going to add that slack to the inside by pushing in the wires a little bit. More slack. Okay, now here we go, let's take a look. Here's our commutator. And this one, it's dirty, but we can clean that up. I don't see a lot of carbon dust on the inside of the motor, which is nice because that's always real fun to clean up. But look, the wire 
coming from the coil is attached down here all the way at the opening for the brushes. So you do not want to yank on this. This is about as far apart as I want to get this end. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to grab around this coil here and I'm going to keep pushing on these wires because I can get them through the little grommet here and then we'll have at least this top portion separated out. And you can tug, just be careful when you're working these parts, the little contacts here or connections through this part because you don't want to snap it off. I love taking apart the motors. It's one of my favorite parts. Um, but just slowly working. And it's really great if you can get one to go through at a time instead of both, you just have a little bit more room. And I'm pushing it through more than I'm pulling it through because I'm not putting then stress on the end where this is connected. And again, for the second one, pushing, pushing here. And there we go. So we have one half off. And this might free up for you while you're taking the motor apart. We can just set it aside. If you wanna wipe off the inside of this, you can. So this is the pulley end. And it's almost completely apart except for I want to check and make sure I don't have any little bearings stuck up against this end. If you look where the commutator runs through, I believe the armature is the proper word for this coil part here. Do you see all these? Slide them off. Count how many are there. I have one, two, this looks like a thicker one, three. So the thicker one was up against the armature and then two more that are thinner after that. Set these aside, we'll wipe them off, but we will put them back. I've never, I don't think I've ever had a motor that I could find a pattern of how many of these I should find on each end. It's always different. So just put it back like you found it. That's the best thing you can do. So we want to set these aside. And I want to take out the grease wick, if it's still here, that's inside this port because I will replace it. If you didn't want to replace the grease wicks, then what you would do is find something like a smaller q-tip type tool and you can put it inside this hole and at least maybe clean out some of the older grease before you add new grease but this is where your grease goes to grease your motor so when i was doing that look do you see this poke do you see right inside this hole that's my grease wick and when i was kind of pushing this inside to show it to you it started to push it out, which is fine because I want to take it out. If you have a pair of tweezers, it's really probably easier to use tweezers to kind of pull. And you can keep pushing as long as you have a tool that will fit in there. See, it looks like it's going to go out that way for me. But you just don't want to pull the grease wick too hard and too fast because they can break and then you're stuck with trying to get out a tiny little piece that's left inside that didn't come out. And that's just kind of a pain. So see, I have more of the grease wick sticking out. And I'll see if I can give it a little wiggle, get the rest of it out. So on the end of this grease wick 
is actually a spring. It looks just like the springs on the um, brushes. Here's the grease wick. The spring would have been right here. So it's kind of like fed into the spring a little bit. The spring gives the pressure that it needs to have up against this part of the armature. So I'm squeezing this and it's just hard and I could try to clean it and soak it. Definitely can do that. But since I have new wicks, I'll replace them. So set this aside. So I kind of care about getting the spring out that's in here too. And I just want to say it's kind of a pain to put back in. So if you remove the wicks, that's probably good enough as long as you're cleaning out as much of the old grease as you can get. But I'm going to remove the spring as well. And it's just a, here's my handy dental pick. I stick my pick inside this hole. And if I start pushing, do you see that? There's my spring. I want that out. And you'll see why in just a second. Figure out the best way to pull our spring out gently. So imagine trying to stick this back in, it's not easy. But look, and I've actually seen a lot of them that's worse than this. It's just a bunch of old grease on the spring. I wanna clean that. So I've got one, we have the one on the other end, setting it aside. This is now fully taken apart. Yes, you can pull out this little shiny silver port if you want. I never do that. When I have tried, you always end up with some markings on the metal part of the port and I don't like that. So I'd rather do it the hard way and keep, you know, preserve this so it stays nice looking. So this is ready to set aside for cleaning. You can pop out the grommet if you want. Just be careful not to like, um, break it because this is old rubber. It's going to be crumbly and hard, but it will push out. I'm going to leave it in for now. So make some space to work here. Okay. So we still have to take this apart. And what we're going to do is we want to get the armature out. That's what has a commutator on the end, but it's a really tight squeeze down inside this hole. It helps to kind of pull apart these covered wires and then you should be able to slide it right out. And this, my friends, is the armature and the commutator. And this is what we will clean and hopefully when it's clean, this black line here is going to be more like this copper color up here at the top and we'll have great, awesome contact with our brushes then and the speed of the motor should be so much better once it's cleaned up. Now, on this end, just one, <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, so I'm gonna set that one aside and I'll check down inside here to see, as, did one get stuck? It didn't, there's just one. This does not come apart any further. It just doesn't. Don't pull on it. You'll have to get inside with some Q-tips and do some wiping and stuff, but you don't want to yank on this. If you end up yanking this apart, then either you will have to solder or someone else will have to solder these back. So it's just an extra step that's unnecessary unless there was damage you could already see that needed to be repaired. These don't, they're fine. So last thing I have to do 
to finish this up is remove the second grease wick, which is the same way that I removed the first. Just gonna get it started. And you know what? It feels like maybe, oh, nope, there is one. I thought for a minute maybe there wasn't one. So I can see it. Just gonna use my tweezers, give it a little, there it goes, it fell out. Second grease wick, same as the first. And I should also be able to get that spring. I think my little pick worked better. There it is. I'm just gonna coax it out. It should, there we go. See, look at that. Imagine I'm gonna go through all the work of putting in clean wicks, but I'm going to leave that. I don't think so. So we'll set that aside to clean it up. So that's it. The motor is apart. It is ready to clean and actually Everything that we want to take off the machine is now off. Isn't that exciting? Do you know what that means next? That means we get to start cleaning our machine. So set your parts aside, your armature, the coil and the bottom half of the motor, top half where the pulley end is, your band, Two screws that hold the motor together. Two springs, if you went for the deep dive. Two grease wicks, you could clean them, you can get new ones. Oh, someone sells these on Etsy, just a pack of two. So if you're just doing this once, you can literally buy two of these. Brush covers. These little I'm calling them bearings. That might be the wrong name, but in my case, I have four total brushes, motor mount, screw, and washer, pulley, and set screw. And yes, it's a dirty job. Most of this is carbon from the brushes that blows up all inside the motor. So you'll want to wash your hands and clean your fingernails when you're done. So that's it. Thank you so much for following along. We are going to start cleaning our machine next. Hope you all have a great day. Bye.